Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon every one of us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was salatu was salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Blessings and salutations upon the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his companions and his household and every one of us. May Allah bless us and grant us Jannatul Firdaus and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who follow season upon season. As Ramadan comes to an end, we usually have the months of Hajj that clock in immediately. And therefore, we need to understand the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the obedience we had in Ramadan, the same Allah we were obeying is that Allah outside of Ramadan as well. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us consistency in worship and to make us from those who realize that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa, God consciousness and maghfirah to achieve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant that to us. My brothers, my sisters, whenever we are seated, we are taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we should be conscious about what we say in a little gathering. We say things, we teach things, some of the utterances are unnecessary. If it is a major sin, like we've been engaging in backbiting, slander, false accusation in our gatherings, in that case, we need to seek the forgiveness of Allah through what is known as Tawbah. This Tawbah is actually to ask Allah's forgiveness from a major sin that we have been perpetrating. If it was involving a third party, another human being, we would have to go to that person and seek forgiveness from them as well. So if I was backbiting about another brother or a sister, I would need to contact that person and seek forgiveness from them. Uh, there is no quick fix or quick solution to say, okay, uh, let me just make dua for them. Let me just give a charity on their behalf and inshallah things will happen. If they're alive, they're reachable. You need to make sure you actually go and speak to them to seek forgiveness. Uh, and you need to make sure that if you cannot get hold of them, you cannot reach them, you start undoing what you did by going back to the people who you spoke with and uh, telling them what we did was wrong, the person is innocent, the person is free from what we said, uh, and you say good things about them to nullify the bad that you did. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon us. But it's very important not to engage in that which is destructive when we have our gatherings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely given us the gift of communication. Imagine if we could not speak, we would just be looking at one another, blank look, a blank stare, without knowing what we want to say. But Allah has blessed us and a lot of the other creatures that communicate. In fact, all the creatures actually praise Allah. As Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ Every single thing declares the praise of Allah, but unfortunately, you don't understand their praise or their way of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as we are seated in the gathering, if there are things that are not so serious, but perhaps we might have cracked a little joke, we might have laughed excessively a little bit, you know, we might have forgotten uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a few moments, we might have said a few things that are considered minor sin, etc. In that particular case, as we are getting up, we are taught something by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is known as kafaratul majlis. Kafaratul majlis meaning the supplication that you will make that will be an expiation of the sins that were engaged in in that particular gathering. Now, when we say expiation of the sins, we are talking of minor things, not major things. You know, you cannot uh, engage in a major sin and then say, okay, I'll just read the kafaratul majlis, it's fine, uh, I will be forgiven. No, but the minor things, uh, the uh, obliviousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a moment, etc., all that happens. So, what is the dua? The dua is as follows. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught this to us. We are praising Allah. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory be to you. In fact, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Glory be to you and all praise is due unto you, O Allah. 
Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, and I repent to you, O Allah. Now, there is another narration which adds at the beginning, Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk which would mean uh, all praise is due to Allah, glory be to Allah. All praise is due to you, O Allah, glory be to you, O Allah. So we've repeated it twice, one in third person, one in second person. And then we say, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you, O Allah. And I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, and I repent to you. So this is something very, very interesting. People ask me when I uh, end sometimes some of my episodes, some of my lectures, I say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Now you know why I say that. It's called kafaratul majlis. When you're finished, when you're done, you, you want to Allah to forgive you for the little that might have happened while you were talking, the mistakes, you know, some of the errors, the blunders, we all make mistakes. I know once or twice I've made mistakes because of uh, the fact that you're speaking, you're speaking to the public, you know, you're speaking to people, you have uh, an episode that you may be uh, engaged in so much that you've made a mistake in your wording, in the pronunciation, sometimes in an explanation, sometimes unintentionally you might have said something wrong, and sometimes a pure mistake, maybe you didn't know it so well and maybe you learnt it wrong. So it can happen. We seek Allah's forgiveness for all of that by saying, Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdihi, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that from us. No, I've not ended the, the, the session. I'm still continuing. My brothers and sisters, that was just a lesson. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Now let me move further. Brothers and sisters, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us in a million ways. One of the biggest blessings of Allah is when you are confused, He teaches you how to seek His guidance. If I'm confused about something important, I want to get married, I want to start a business, I want to travel to a certain place, I want to shift countries, I want to, I want to open uh, something new, I want to uh, you know, do something, I want to make decisions for my children, and I'm confused. I need to have an element of steadfastness. I need to be uh, not knowing what's better for me. I really don't know. So I'm confused. If you're not confused, you make a dua to Allah to help you make a decision and to bless you in that decision. And then you make the decision based on what you know, based on knowledge, based on seeking guidance and advice. So when we want to do something important, say you want to get married, you seek guidance, you meet the person uh, within the Islamic uh, context and framework, you meet the person uh, and you will talk to them once, twice, and I hope parents facilitate this for their children because it's a sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to meet them. You know, it doesn't mean that they just bring a tray uh, of tea or samosas and as they walk past, you've got to just look at them and you've got to make a decision of your life. It's not like that. That is a traditional cultural way of doing things. We in Islam are taught that you are allowed to meet, to communicate, to speak, to look at uh, properly uh, with respect uh, within the confines of the Sharia uh, until you are satisfied uh, one way or the other. If you've met someone once and you say, nah, not for me, it's okay, you can decline respectfully, don't feel bad. If you meet them once and you're confused, you can meet them again and again on condition that you haven't compromised the, bro the broader framework of the Sharia. There comes a time when your decision will be made by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there are good qualities, good things you're hearing, you've asked. There is something called consultation or shura, which is very, very important. So these big matters, your business, your marriage, big decisions of shifting country, etc., etc., Ask the guidance of genuine people who will guide you, who know. Those who have knowledge and they're genuine. They have knowledge in what you're asking them for and they have sincerity, they love you, they care for you enough to give you genuine, proper advice. When you have those qualities, you ask the person, look, this is what I intend, what's your uh, opinion, what is the advice you can give me? They will give you advice. Based on that advice, you will have a feeling in your heart. If that is a decision is made, you're inclining towards one thing. There is no point of then seeking the guidance of Allah through what is known as istikhara. Istikhara literally means to seek the guidance 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no point in seeking that guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are not confused, you know exactly what you want. You just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it good for you and to give you barakah in it. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Once you have made your decision, lay your trust in Allah and go ahead. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. For as long as you're a decent person trying to earn the pleasure of Allah, it will be a good decision. A good decision does not mean you will achieve success the way you want it, but rather whatever is going to happen is going to be better for you. So if you're going to start a business and you're, you feel that you really have to do it, you go into the business and suddenly you start suffering loss upon loss. Allah knows that was the best thing for you, your deen, your dunya, your akhirah. You know, your life, your hereafter, your future, because you softened up, you came closer to Allah, it helped you, it, it brought you closer. You want to get married and you realize after some time that uh, I made dua, you know, I was happy, I made a decision, ala barakatillah, uh, upon the blessings of Allah, I started and I did this whole thing correct, but it ended up in a divorce. Well, that divorce would have brought you closer to Allah. It might have woken you up. It might have changed you for the better as a person. It might have brought you uh, such that you earned Jannatul Firdaus as a result of the patience that you had to bear because of the difficulties and hardships that you actually went through. So Allah knows it was better for you. It does not mean that because your mashwara was heading in this direction that there is going to be total bliss and you're going to have heaven on earth. That's not what Allah said. Allah said it's better for you. So the first stop is we seek guidance, help, advice. We seek the advice. Then we make a decision. If we are still confused, we really don't know. Look, I met this brother. I met this sister. Mashallah, they're, they're okay. I sought guidance, but I still don't know. Should I, shouldn't I? Allahumma anta rabbi. You turn to Allah. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. You are my Lord, oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the dua of istikhara. It's quite a lengthy dua. I'm going to spend the rest of this episode speaking about this dua, going through the wordings, explaining it to them, explaining them to you, and trying to tell you how exactly it's done. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to say, the Prophet sallallahu taught us istikhara, which means seeking the guidance of Allah, the same way he would teach us verses of the Quran, which means these were very, very sacred, important words, supplications from revelation indeed. And he used to tell us, when you want to seek the guidance of Allah, you would uh, clean yourself, you would make the two units of prayer, and then you would supplicate using the following words. Allahumma anta rabbi. No. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika. Oh Allah, I am seeking your guidance from your knowledge. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika. Oh Allah, I am seeking your guidance from your knowledge. And I am seeking the help from your power and your ability. I'm seeking help. I'm seeking ability and power from your ability and power. I want you to help me. I want you to empower me, O oh Allah. I seek your guidance. I seek your empowerment. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika wa astakdiruka biqudratika wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim and I am seeking from you, from the great bounty that you have. Oh Allah, you own everything. I'm seeking from that bounty. So we have mentioned three things. We want Allah's help because He is the one who has the knowledge, right? We want Allah's, Allah to empower us because He's the owner of power. And we are asking Allah from His great virtue. Why are we asking? فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ وَأَنْتَ تَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ For indeed, O Allah, you are able and we are unable. And you know and we don't know. And you are the knower of the unseen. That's why we're asking you. That's why we need your help. Subhanallah. O Allah, I'm asking your help. I'm seeking from you. I'm seeking your guidance. أَسْتَخِيرُكَ بِعِلْمِكَ I'm seeking guidance from your knowledge. And I'm seeking empowerment from your power. You are the owner of power. And I'm asking from your great bounty. For indeed you are the one who's able. Not me, I'm not able. You know and I don't know. And you are the knower of the unseen. Now we are saying, Allahumma. 
إن كان هذا الأمر خير لي أو oh الله if this thing and and you think about the thing when you are when you get to that po portion of the dua you're thinking about what you're asking Allah for like you're thinking about marriage to someone you're thinking about doing the business you're thinking about something amazing that you want to embark on you say oh Allah if this thing Allahumma in kana hadha al-amra khayrun li oh Allah if this thing is better for me now better for me in what way fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibatu amri in three things Oh Allah, if this is better for me in my deen, fi deeni, in my religion, in my worldly life. Ma'ash is referring to the material living, dunya. We would call it dunya, fi deeni wa dunya, yeah? but rather the dua says fi deeni wa ma'ashi. Uh, in my deen and in my livelihood, my life. Wa to amri, and in the ending of my affairs. So it's talking about the hereafter as well as the... the, the the durability of this particular matter, it needs to be long. It needs to benefit me throughout my life and into the hereafter. So if this is good for my deen, my dunya and my akhirah, that's what we're saying. My life, uh, sorry, my religion, my life and my future. If it is better for me in these three things, then I want you to do for me the following. What are we saying in this dua? In kana hadha al-amra khayrun li fi deeni wa ma'ashi wa aqibatu amri فَقْدِرْهُ لِي So make it possible for me. وَيَسِّرْهُ لِي Make it easy for me. ثُمَّ بَارِكْ لِي فِيهِ And then give me blessings in it. So three things will happen. Allah will make it possible for you. He'll make it easy for you. And then He'll give you blessings in it. So if He is making it difficult for you, if He is not making it possible for you, then you can expect you to understand that the response is negative. Okay? Let's move on to the second, the last part of that dua where it's the opposite, where we're saying, Oh Allah, if this is bad for me. So, Allahumma, in kana hadha al amra sharrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibatu amri. Oh Allah, if you know that this thing that I'm thinking about right now that I want to embark in is bad for me in my deen, in my dunya, in my akhirah, like I said, dini wa ma'ashi, ma'ashi is the living. وَعَقِبَةُ amri, Meaning the future. Oh Allah, if you know that, then oh Allah, do me the following. What is the following? فَصْرِفْهُ anni, So keep it away from me. وَصْرِفْنِي anhu, And keep me away from it. وَقْدُرْ لِيَ الْخَيْرُ أو الْخَيْرَ حَيْثُ كَانَ And destined for me the goodness wherever it is right for me whatever the goodness is for me i don't know what it is now this is bad for me you prescribe for me the goodness wherever it is and whatever it is thumma thumma bihi then make me happy with that make me happy with it the fact that you took it away from me make me happy with it the fact that you made it difficult for me make me happy with it the fact that you took it away from me make me happy with it the fact that you took me away from it make me happy with it so your reply now will come from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is that reply so that reply will not necessarily come in the form of a dream. You know, there is the possibility of a dream. You see a dream, they say you see a positive dream. Uh, sometimes you see a negative dream. You know, positive dream meaning anything positive. Uh, it could be a beautiful holiday, it could be lovely greenery, it could be something uh, that's really good, you know, you, you, happiness and so on. And anything negative would depict negativity. But we're not so pious as to have our dreams actually come to us to tell us what's going on. Sometimes that doesn't happen. The response of istikhara is something you need to know more than the istikhara itself. So how do I see a response? Well, go back to look at the meaning of that same dua that you've been supplicating Allah with and you will understand how the response is going to come. So the first thing you are saying, Oh Allah, if this is good for me, my deen, my dunya, my akhirah, then make it easy for me. Allah is making it easy for you. Wow. The following day someone calls you and says, You know brother, I have a piece of land that I'm prepared to actually sell you. You know, someone is selling this plot and you were just thinking of opening up a farm, starting a farm. Wow, that's a good sign. What's Allah doing? He's responding to your dua of istikhara. Things are happening. They're rolling, as we would say. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So you want to get married and the next day someone says, you know, this sister is a very good sister. Out of the blue, someone says it's a very good sister or a really good brother. SubhanAllah, what's happening? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitating it for you. He's telling you, you told me to make it easy for you. Here goes. Big smile, mashallah. And then what happens? 
uh, sometimes the opposite where someone calls you and they start discussing the negatives of a person. You know, brother, uh, I had a very, very bad uh, experience with this sister and so on. And you're like, oh, is it? You listen carefully, see if it's negative. You don't have to say anything to anyone. You just know between you and Allah. Okay, that's a sign. Thank you, oh Allah, I appreciate it. And I really, really thank you, Ya Ilaha al Alameen. Imagine. So the, the response of the istikhara is not something superstitious that, you know, suddenly a goblin will pitch up to explain to you that something bad is supposed to have happened. No. It is literally in that dua. You said, oh Allah, make it easy for me. If it's good for me, if it's not, take it away from me. So suddenly it was not being made good. That is a negative sign. And if it was made good, it is a very, very positive sign. So my brothers and sisters, the same applies when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, we should be calling out to him that if it is not good for me, take it away from me. Then you know what? It will be taken away from you and it will be made difficult for you. Now, sometimes people might say, okay, this is being made difficult for me, but, uh, you know, I'm not wrong. If you're not wrong, you need to ask yourself a few things. How long are you prepared to wait for? What is it that you're losing? What is at stake? Why would you like to make this decision? And for how long would you like to remain in it? Uh, that, is, that is all that you need to consider also when you are making a decision. But I go back to what I said at the beginning of the discussion of istikhara. When you are not confused, there is no point in making this istikhara. You might want to use this as a dua and a supplication ordinarily on other days, which is not wrong. You can use it outside of the istikhara. You just on a daily basis for Allah to guide you through the decisions of the day, for Allah to guide you through decisions. Oh Allah, I ask you from your knowledge. You know, I don't know. You are the powerful. I am, I am not powerful at all. I seek empowerment. Oh Allah, guide me. If this is better for me, my deen, my dunya. And I make the dua several times during the day. There is no harm. It is a dua. It is in the hadith. It is a sunnah dua. You can say it as and when you wish. And Allah will guide you by, the, by His will uh, in the decisions of your day. But when it comes to major matters, that is when the real sunnah clocks in. Now I want to speak about one last thing before we end this beautiful episode. And that is, my brothers and sisters, what we need to know when the dua of istikhara is made and we get a positive response, do you know what happens? It does not necessarily mean that we are going to be happy. It means it's better for us. That's amazing. Remember this. People say, I made istikhara. And you know what? I made istikhara and everything was positive. And now I got married and I'm suffering, I'm struggling, I'm going through a divorce. How could Allah do that to me? Well, you haven't understood istikhara and you don't know what it was meant to achieve for you. So my brothers and sisters, it's amazing how we need to look into the dua of istikhara. We need to understand that this dua of istikhara is so powerful. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not uh, it, it is not empowering us to be happy, but rather to have to achieve that which will please us in the long term, draw us closer to Allah. It is beneficial for us in our deen, dunya and akhirah, not necessarily happiness the way we understand it. So my brothers and sisters, these are the blessed gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. We are really, really fortunate to have uh, the ability to seek the guidance of our maker the maker himself you tell me who has taught this to us wallahi we owe a lot sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet muhammad peace be upon him has indeed been a blessing to us we owe him we owe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah's peace and blessings be upon us all may allah's peace and blessings be primarily and ultimately upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then every one of us aqulu qawli hadha wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh